Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day we have. Thank you. So welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony for a new facility for our forage animal production research laboratory here within the University of Kentucky. My name is Simon Liu. I am the administrator of Agricultural Research Service, ARS. ARS is a major, major research agency within USDA with um, 2,000 strong research scientists and postdoctors. They're working in 95 locations around the country. I'm so delighted and honored to have the opportunity to welcome so many distinguished guests here for this wonderful, wonderful occasion. I extend my hearty greeting to Senator McConnell and also the leaders from the great Commonwealth of Kentucky. We appreciate your support of our research so that we can better deliver our service to the people of Kentucky. I'm so happy to see so many leaders from USDA here. We are especially honored to have the Secretary of USDA, Tom Vilsack, with us, and also the Under Secretary, Jacob Chiang, with us. Mr. Secretary, I thank you very much for your great leadership for the department and also for your constant support of ARS. I also like to see uh, many, of me, many of you, the partners, and also the stakeholders from the University of Kentucky. They are terrific. They have been uh, along with us all the step that led to today's wonderful, wonderful ceremony. I also like to take this opportunity to thank Alberto, Dr. Alberto Pentoja, our Midwest Area Director, Dr. Michael Fry, our research leader here, and also all the staff within the lab here in the University of Kentucky. I know today is a long time coming, but your dedications, your persistency, that really are essential so that we arrive here in one piece. We are so very happy so very proud to see the vital role you play to improve the forage-based production of cattle, horses, sheep, and goats, especially on the small and mid-sized farms. So with this new facility, we will continue to expand our collaboration with the University of Kentucky. We are continuing to expand our research so that we can address the issue that impact the producers and the, stock, uh, the stakeholders within Kentucky. We are continuing to expand our collaboration with the university, especially with the College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment, led by Dean Nancy Cox. Dr. Cox became the dean back in 2014 and in 2020, assume additional duty as the vice, pres vice president of the land grant engagement. Dean Cox is a great leader. He's a great collaborator. We enjoy working with you, Dean Cox. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome Dean Cox. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu, and thank you for all the con contributions you've made to our system over the years. And on behalf of our entire community at the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, Food and Environment, welcome everyone to our campus. We are so honored to have you here to celebrate this groundbreaking. Thank you, Leader McConnell, Secretary Vilsack, Undersecretary Jacob Young, President Capilouto, and all our ARS colleagues from headquarters and the Midwest region. I would like to uh, let our out-of-state visitors know that our audience here today includes Kentucky elected policymakers, local and state leaders, 
volunteers and advisors from the agribusiness community, our producers and their organization, our local ARS scientists and their collaborators, uh, Kentucky State University, our land grant partner, and more. To announce all these distinguished partners would take much longer than the time I am allotted, but thanks to all of you for being here and sharing this event with us. Thanks also to the Corps of Engineers for their support, as well as the architects that are working on this project. Secretary Vilsack, welcome back to our college. In fact, you visited in 2014 during my first three weeks as dean, and you inspired our students and our uh, faculty to serve agriculture um, better every day. Um, but today would not be possible without the unwavering commitment of leader Mitch McConnell, his steadfast support for investment in this project allows us to take a huge step forward to continue our mission of best-in-class research. For over a decade, Leader McConnell never lost his confidence in the value of this facility and its research to advance Kentucky. And in 2019, thanks to his efforts, $65.9 million was appropriated to build the new USDA ARS laboratory building dedicated to advancing research in forage and forage animals that play a critical role in the Kentucky agriculture ecosystem. We also have a substantial role in hemp research. Leader McConnell has, in fact, has been essential in efforts to provide over $40 million to the UK College of Agriculture um, uh, since this century began, or on behalf of the UK College of Agriculture, about half of which has gone to the Forage Animal Production Research Unit. I don't know that there's another acronym around that shares the name FAPRU, but we have it. Um, but to, um, to support this lab, we've been working together with the FAPU, FAPRU folks since 2002. But today is a capstone moment to recognize and thank you, Leader McConnell, for your investments in the college and the confidence in which you hold us. So um, it would be difficult to overstate the importance of this facility to Kentucky and the forage producing regions of this country, but Kentucky is a forage state. Seven million of our 12 million acres that are devoted to ag production in Kentucky are in pastures and forages. Forages underpin two of our state's signature industries, beef and equine. We have the largest beef herd east of the Mississippi River for cow-calf. And we are the horse, horse, horse health and horse safety capital of the world. Um, and we have some one million acres of forage in the state supporting the equine industry. And um, this new facility will transform and accelerate the research being conducted here on behalf of these industries with our ARS and UK scientists being able to work side by side in the new facility. And with that close partnership, our producers and agricultural businesses in this state and in the region get near instant access to the most cutting edge research findings to ensure they continue to lead the world in sustainable food production. So thank you again, Leader McConnell, for your steadfast support. Secretary Vilsack and our federal partners who help our nation's agriculture every day. And to university leadership, President Capilouto, for your unwavering support of our mission. So today is a day to celebrate partnerships. Um, and in doing so, I'm very pleased to welcome to the University of Kentucky and to this podium, United States Department of Agriculture Under Secretary for Research, Education, Economics, that acronym is REE, -E, and USDA Chief Scientist, Dr. Shavanda Jacob Jung, who has contributed in so many ways to federal agricultural research leadership. We're so pleased to have you here. Let's welcome Dr. Jacob Jung. Good morning. 
See, I know how we do it in Georgia. <laughs> Good morning. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for this groundbreaking. This event serves as a milestone and builds excitement for the new Forge Animal Production Research Unit. FABRU is so much easier to say. And thank you, Dean Cox, for that kind introduction. Lita McConnell, Secretary Vilsack, President Capilouto, and Dean Cox. It is an honor to have you here with us this, for this morning's event. Your involvement and your support has been critical to helping us reach this point. As former head of ARS, uh, I am pleased that this day is finally here and that I'm here to see it. I know everyone is ex excited as I am about this new unit, which is slated to open in 2026, which sounds like a long time for now, but it'll be here before we know it. In my opinion, the term groundbreaking represents far more than the breaking of ground albeit an important launch of this new research facility. It also encapsulates, encapsulates, encapsulates the groundbreaking research carried out by ARS and the University of Kentucky scientists who will continue their vital work of helping to enhance the nation's food supply, including ensuring the nutritional quality and persistence of grasses and other forage plants important for livestock, which you've already heard this morning. Ultimately, today's bricks and mortars kickoff will result in a facility encompassing impressive functionality and modernized design. It is the result of a comprehensive planning effort involving the hard work of many partners, including Leader McConnell and his office, President Capilouto, Dean Cox and their staff, and our longstanding partners at the University of Kentucky, particularly your College of Agriculture, Food and Environment. UK CAF for short. So members of the Kentucky executive and legislative branches of government, local officials, including Mayor Gordon and her team, and members of the contiguous community, and of course, all my USDA colleagues, as well as the architects and engineers who took part in the planning and design. And the entire team who will be involved in building, equipping, and maintaining the new unit. And finally, thank you, congratulations, and happy investigating to the ARS and CAF scientists who will have the honor of working in this facility. My gratitude to each of you, every one of you, well done across the board. Now, this project that we're here to celebrate today is a crucial part of our nation's overall food supply chain. Because of the design upgrades and increased opportunity it creates for collaboration, the new facility will be an even bigger contributor to forage animal production than the current structure. Which for almost 20 years, and so we have this facility that has a, a wonderful history. For almost 20 years, it's been the home to many outstanding researchers. Contributions include determining a key for food source, the fescue toxicity in beef cattle, an infliction that costs $1 billion annually in production losses, they've identified components of forage legumes that reverse fescue toxicity, improving animal production, health, and welfare, and also developing feeding strategies and other technologies to mitigate fescue toxicity. In the broader context, building and operating this new research unit will be a major step in enhancing economic development in Lexington, a wonderful thing. We're all here today to work together towards the shared goal of improving health through food and nutrition and doing it in a way that will truly make a difference. Again, I thank you for your participation in this groundbreaking and for joining us in celebrating this terrific occasion. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Eli Capilouto, president of the University of Kentucky. Dr. Capilouto became the 12th president of the university on July 1, 2011. Under his leadership, the Commonwealth's flagship and land-grant research university has grown from $2.7 billion to more than $6 billion in total operations. I'm a little jealous of that. <laughs> and has gained significant momentum in advancing the state of Kentucky overall, the institution's singular yet multifaceted mission. A native of Montgomery, Alabama, Dr. Cavaluto pre previously served as provost of the University of Alabama at Birmingham and dean of its School of Public Health. Dr. Capilouto holds several undergraduate and graduate degrees from schools within the University of Alabama system, including a doctorate of dental medicine, as well as a doctorate in health policy and management from Harvard University. Dr. Capilouto.
Well, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, we do have a much bigger budget when I arrived, and that's because of the entire University of Kentucky family. And I got to welcome you on their behalf, starting with our trustees, three of whom are here today, trustees Kramer, Melanson, and Pope, I thank them. On behalf of the over 30,000 students, many of whom get to kindle their research curiosity, even as undergraduates and certainly those as PhD students who I think would benefit from this kind of facility. And then the over 20,000 faculty and staff who together unite every day in a common mission to advance Kentucky. So on their behalf, they're the ones that get a budget to really now $7 billion, um, I welcome you. And I am pleased to have the privilege to introduce university's dear friend and partner, leader Mitch McCall, in just a few moments. On this day, and as so many others, I am reminded in compelling and meaningful ways of two things. The importance of our legacy in history, which informs and guides everything we do. And secondly, the power of partnerships. The idea that we can do and accomplish so much more, working together and with common purpose toward uncommonly important goals. As I visited recently with dedicated farmers, scientists, and extension officers working to rebuild at our West Kentucky Research Farm, the Princeton Station as it's commonly referred to, I reflected on the fact that about 100 years ago, another dean of this college, Thomas Poe Cooper, talked about the importance of our work in agriculture in and for Kentucky. This farm, he said of Princeton Station, has in it the soul of these people. Today, near the former home that's almost complete in its remodel where he resided and soon to be a, a, a nucleus of a research center that bears his name, I think Dean Cooper would express a similar sentiment if he were with us today. The work, the work so many of you do to sustain and strengthen the farm economy of the state is fundamental to our identity as Kentuckians. The soul of our people in this place, in this work, just as I believe that this institution and what we do here is so deeply embedded in the soul of this state. Our mission, built over 160 years now, born out of the Agriculture and Mechanical College of Kentucky, is to advance the Commonwealth in everything that we do. It is why we were created. It is why we exist today. Today's groundbreaking for the Forage Animal Production Lab speaks to the heart of what a land-grant institution like ours is so distinctly positioned to do, and that is to take basic discovery and in this case, of forages and the uh, animals that depend upon them, and apply it, apply it, so that that knowledge can be quickly applied and transferred directly to those on the front lines of producing. Dean Cox and her team, here with us, along with so many others in the college, have worked tirelessly over many years to make today possible. From a research farm in Princeton to the Horseman's Club in uh, Breathitt County. And that Horseman's Club in the middle of floods that devastated the eastern part of our state, they delivered food to those in need in the aftermath of that horrible tragedy. This College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment is poised 
at the intersection of discovery and solution on behalf of Kentucky's agricultural community. Long before almost anyone else at the University of Kentucky, this college was working to translate groundbreaking discovery into actionable and relevant solutions. I've been witness to their discoveries that are not only making an impact in the Commonwealth, but I can honestly say across the globe. Thank you. This work and these efforts, of course, also would not be possible without partners like those in the U.S. Department of Agriculture, represented by Secretary Vilsack and the members of his team that have joined us today. You're, you recognize that the soul of our people is found in the farms and fields of Kentucky and other places across the country that produce our food and serve as the backbone of our communities. Thank you for being here and thank you for the support that has helped make today possible. Our next speaker understands our history and the purpose of partnership better than virtually anyone. For years, leader Mitch McConnell has recognized the essential role this institution plays in helping grow and build a Kentucky that is healthier, wealthier, and wiser. He has made Kentucky his life's work. And he has been our steady and steadfast partner in our mission to transform and advance this state. From cancer care to translational science, from the scourge of opioid misuse to the agricultural institutions and innovations we are celebrating today. He has pushed, he has supported us to do more and be more for the state we all serve. The bottom line is simply this. The $65.9 million that is making this lab a reality would not have happened without Senator McConnell's strong support and leadership when this project was first conceived more than a decade ago. We turn to Senator McConnell often, and unfailingly, he is there to answer. Our story as an institution has many chapters and authors. Senator McConnell has been one of those authors of our story. It's Kentucky's story. It is my honor to ask Senator McConnell to come forward to share some remarks on a very special day. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Dr. Capilouto. Uh, it's no uh, secret, I didn't grow up on a farm. But when I found myself in the United States Senate a number of years ago, in looking at Kentucky's strengths to enhance and capitalize on, agriculture was right at the top of the list. So I joined the Agriculture Committee and uh, subsequently the Agriculture Subcommittee of Appropriations, that's where the money is. And um, decided to, to focus on the UK College of Agriculture over the, over the years. And uh, <clears throat> Dean Cox, you all have never uh, disappointed me and has uh, built a, uh, an agriculture college that we're all so immensely proud of. In spite of all the uh, uh, hostility you see between the two parties routinely, uh, particularly in political campaigns, uh, we do on many, many occasions put that aside 
and, and work together. And Secretary Bilzak, I appreciate you being here. Been very responsive as we've had a number of challenges trying to work uh, through all of this to get to where we are uh, uh, today. The um, You know, I started on this uh, campus a number of years ago um, at a different college from the uh, College of Agriculture, but it's always great to be back at UK and uh, witness all the extraordinary progress that's been made. Uh, Dr. Capilouto, you've been beyond our wildest expectations. You've been outstanding. There's just a lot to be uh, proud of here today. For a long time, I said that Kentucky farmers are some of the best uh, in the world. Our vibrant economy and state pride are largely built on the back of our farming industry. But our agricultural edge hasn't been by chance. For over a century, UK's leading research has underpinned our farms, big and small, throughout the Commonwealth. So when I heard the College of Agriculture was exploring a project to modernize its research facility, I was immediately on board and glad to help. I was proud to do my part to help secure the nearly $66 million in federal funding to establish this new lab at UK in partnership with USDA. After three years of planning and countless hours of co collaboration, the project is finally at a point where we can start to see the vision actually become a reality. Today, a big moment this is a big moment, not just for UK, but for the entire Commonwealth. Central Kentucky is well on the way to becoming the go-to hub for high-tech advanced agricultural research. Its special focus on the cattle and equine industries in particular will help keep Kentucky's multi-billion dollar agriculture industry at the forefront of our nation. At UK's research unit, our best and brightest are already broadening our understanding of the feeds and forages our farms animals consume. And they're looking at ways to make our pastures more sustainable and longer lasting. While I'm far from <laughs> calling myself an expert in this field, we are full of experts in the field in the room, the math of this is pretty simple. Better research, better farms, better Kentucky. We all stand to gain from investments that keep our Commonwealth on the cutting edge. As I indicated earlier, as a senior member of the Senate Agriculture Committee and the Appropriations Committee as well, I've firmly focused my career on supporting agricultural communities across our Commonwealth. And I'm proud to say this facility builds on that promise in a big, big way. Thank you for getting a partner in this work, for being a partner in this work and putting your trust in me to try to do my part. I look forward to working with you all to make sure this project is seen through. And I wanna thank everyone for being here uh, now the real work actually begins. Before I wrap up, I have the pleasure of introducing the, the Secretary of Agriculture. This guy must be pretty good because he's done it twice. <laughs> um, he was Secretary during the Obama administration and then invited back when President Biden uh, took office. He um, is from Iowa, as you know, started off in politics as a mayor, then a member of the legislature, and then the governor of Iowa. 
There were a lot of Democrats in Iowa in those days. We're working hard to eliminate that. <laughs> he, uh, in my view, was a, was a perfect choice for this administration for this job. He um, understands American agriculture like not many do. And I am deeply, personally grateful for your help on this project and for being here today. Welcome, Secretary Vilsack. Thank, thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, Senator, it's uh, great to be back in Kentucky. Uh, reflecting on my return to the state, I realize this is one of the few times that I will leave Kentucky with the same amount of money in my pocket as I normally have, I come here on the uh, first Saturday in May. Uh, there's a little activity going on here in the state, and invariably I lose a lot of money. So it's great to be back in Kentucky, uh, and it's great to be here for such an in incredibly important opportunity. Uh, Mr. President, Dean, uh, you have every reason in the world to be incredibly proud of this land-grant university and the work that you do in agriculture. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, as much as you know, as much as you know, and you do know quite a bit about the work of Senator McConnell in helping this university, uh, you may not know the full story. Uh, being the leader, uh, either a majority leader or minority leader, is an incredibly uh, stressful job. Uh, there are multitude of pushes and pulls on your time and your energy and your effort. Uh, and it would be easy and understandable uh, if the leader uh, was part of a committee, but actually wasn't really part of a committee. And we see that sometimes uh, in leadership, but not Senator McConnell. He actually comes to the Ag Committee meetings. He comes with uh, a knowledge and awareness of the challenges and troubles that uh, Kentucky producers have. Uh, and he is very specific about the work and the help that is required. And uh, I've appreciated uh, his direction and his guidance uh, in terms of how we might be able to be helpful to Kentucky producers. Uh, you all are very, very fortunate to have this man where he is, uh, and he has not forgotten where he came from, uh, and he is an inc incredible supporter of this university and of this great state. So, Mr. Leader, thank you uh, for your, your friendship and for um, for your work on behalf of the Kentucky farmers. Uh, I would say, uh, Senator, I was the first Democratic governor elected in 30 years in Iowa. Um, I snuck in for eight years. Um, it's quite, quite a different state today, that's for sure. Um, folks, this is a really important day. Uh, and it's not just an important day for Kentucky. I think the, the folks have done a great job of explaining to you the importance of this, of this lab uh, in terms of the university and in terms of Kentucky agriculture. But I think it's my job uh, to make sure that you also understand the reach and the extent of the research that's being done here and the importance that it, it bears for uh, the livestock industry, for the equine industry within the United States and globally. Uh, it, it, it is extraordinarily important that we get the forage issue right. The research that's being done here is first and foremost a collaboration, and that's been mentioned uh, about the important work of scientists working together. And the benefit of this lab will be that the scientists will literally be together in the same facility working on many of these issues and can collaborate more effectively and efficiently. The work that's gonna be done here uh, is about significant issues in the livestock industry. When you talk about trying to figure out ways in which livestock can re reduce the amount of methane that's produced, you're not just talking about climate smart agriculture and uh, opportunities for better animal health. You're also talking about the survival of the livestock industry because there are folks around the world who are interested in trying to restrict and curtail the livestock industry because of methane emissions. So the research that's done here to figure out ways in which that can be reduced really is an opportunity to extend 
uh, this important industry, not just to Kentucky, but to, uh, to the United States and to the world. By extending it, you also mean that we will continue to produce protein, not just for folks here in Kentucky. What is that brought, Dean, that you sell here? What's it called? I don't know if I should sure. say it again. <laughs> um, spicy fat cat. Spicy fat cat, okay. Um, it's a delicacy. Uh, but the reality is the world's going to need more protein. Uh, we're now at 8 billion people. Uh, we're going to fast approach 10 billion people. Uh, it won't be easy to produce the protein given uh, the, the nature uh, of climate and its impact and effect on where we grow and what we grow, but to the extent that you keep this livestock industry healthy uh, and profitable and in business, you're ensuring that people all over the world will receive the necessary protein. Uh, to the extent that you're dealing with research that helps to figure out uh, a, a, an approach to antimicrobial resistance, you're also responding not just to the health of animals, but to the health of people. Uh, and again, the ability to extend this industry in a way that will allow uh, producers to continue to do what they love. To the extent that you are, are, are focused on creating a climate smart livestock industry, you're also producing new income opportunities for producers. There are market opportunities for producers that can produce livestock, produce beef, whatever it might be, in a way where they can tell the market that it has been sustainably produced. And by doing so, they can receive a premium in the market. We, we have uh, launched the Climate Smart Agriculture Commodity Initiative at USDA. Uh, there are 22 uh, project opportunities here just in the state of Kentucky surrounding this new market opportunity. So you're enhancing and increasing farm income. So when you think of the magnitude of this, and I haven't talked about the fact that there's going to be a little uh, research done on new product development with hemp, which is uh, incredibly important. So this is, this is a, a, an important opportunity. And I think it, it, it gives life to what President Lincoln uh, believed would happen when the Department of Agriculture was established and when the land-grant system was established in 1862. Uh, he understood that if you essentially create research opportunities, and you create a mechanism for that research to get out to the producers, that the producers would accept that research, would embrace those new technologies and new approaches, and would continue to be more productive. And never underestimate the significance of that. The reality is there are a few farmers in this audience today, but there are a lot of people who are not farmers. And I want those folks who are not farmers to understand one simple thing about life, that you had the freedom and the opportunity not to be a farmer because there were farmers out there who felt the responsibility of feeding their family and your family. All you had to do was to get a paycheck, be able to go to the grocery store and purchase whatever you needed for your family. Farmers in this country have created the opportunity for the rest of us to dream big dreams, to start businesses, to become professionals, to teach, to, to explore new opportunities. Without farmers and without the productivity of farmers, none of that would be possible, and the complex and powerful economy that we've built in this country would not exist. So this lab uh, is a testimony to collaboration. It's a testimony to science, but it is also a commitment to those who produce and those who farm, that we're going to continue as a society to support them and to be with them as they figure out creative and new ways to be sustainable. The last thing I want to say is, uh, it, and I'm going to get myself in trouble for doing this, this is a state of art facility. Uh, it, it's going to create better security. It, it really is going to allow a number of scientists to work collaboratively together, but it is a very difficult name. I had to write it. <laughs> I had to write it down. I had to look at the sign, the Forage Animal Production Research Unit. Just so you know, from now on in my office, I'm going to refer to it as the McConnell Unit. <laughs>